Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. Hey, take time. I tell you this every Friday. Take time. Listen to the message from Monday. In fact, go listen from the first episode of this message and begin to envelop yourself in the true light. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make requests to our daily bread? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now from you my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Praise God. Hey, Jesus is the light of the world now when we now I I want you to understand something Jesus said we are the light of the world right now then How did we become the light of the world? Do we become light of the world by ourselves? Or we become light of the world because we shine His light? You see that now? Without His light, our light will be darkness. So you remember when Jesus said that when the light that is in you becomes darkness, He didn't say when the light that is in you is darkness. He said when the light that is in you becomes darkness. Let me read it. Matthew chapter 6. King James Version. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 23. He said, but if thy I be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the darkness that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, what I was talking about here was you've had light in you, then something happened to that light that made it become darkness. He said that darkness is going to be great. You know why? Now you had light. And because you have had light, there are people that will be attracted by your light. See, how did you get light? You were shining his light. See? So because you're shining his light, you are attracting people in their numbers. Then, suddenly, you stop receiving light from him. Oh, this has happened to a lot of people. You stop receiving light from him. This can be a pastor. So you have a congregation already. How did that congregation come? Because of the light that you were shining. So they all came. And now, Several, it's not everybody that will shine light to a congregation. Some will shine light in the business area. Some will shine light to, you know, some will even shine light to other pastors. You understand what I'm saying? And they themselves may not even be pastors themselves. But their light is, pastors are supposed to tap from their light. And that's how God made everybody. Everybody has his own portion. So now you're shining that light. And then suddenly you stop receiving light from him. Who is the light? You already have people that you shine lights to, but then you have stopped receiving his light. Then what happens then? The moment you stop receiving his light, your light becomes darkness. You see that now? It becomes darkness. Now the people that you are shining to don't realize that you are no longer shining His light. They are still receiving your light. Guess what they are receiving? 
darkness. That's what you're giving out. You're now giving out darkness because then you will begin to minister your own thoughts. Then you will begin to minister things you have read, things you have picked up from here and there and not shining his light. You will still be quoting the Bible, but you're not shining his light. Guess what you're doing? You're shining darkness. That's why Jesus said how great that darkness will be. And let me tell you this truth. You will pay. You will pay for that darkness that you're shining to everyone. Jesus spoke about anyone who breaks the least of this commandment and shall teach men so. He shall be called what? The least in the kingdom. That's a penalty. You might be great. Everybody knows you. But if the light that you are shining is darkness, Jesus has already said it, that you'll be called in the kingdom. You'll be called least. So the day God begins to line up his men, you'll be far behind. <laughs> Praise God. You'll be far behind. Now, so it's in your place to always make sure you are receiving light from him. He is the light of the world. You never replace him as the light of the world. We are the light because the world can see us. The world cannot see him. So when he says you are the light of the world, he's referring to the way the world sees us. They see us as ones who bring forth light. You see that? But then we know him as the light. So we receive light from him because we are dependent on him. And as long as we are dependent on him, remember what he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And we never replace the vine. We never grow to the point where it said, ah, now we can go and be vine by ourselves. <laughs> we have always been the branches. Now you can grow as a branch, but you're still a branch. And my father, he said, is the husband. So, hey, you know, it, it happens. When you stop receiving life and light from the vine, and all you are, you're still a branch. One day, the vine dresser comes and he cuts you off. And guess what he said will happen when he cuts you off? Men will use you. So when you find yourself in that place where men are using you, but the Lord is no more using you, men are using you. So you're doing things now because of men. You're doing things now because, oh, somebody promised me money. Oh, well, that's why I have to, you know, you're doing this just because of men. Brothers and sisters, most likely you have been cut off as a branch. Now you, and guess what men will do? They will burn you. They will use you as wood, dry wood. They will burn you, burn you out. They will burn you out. You will end up sick. You will end up stressed and distressed. Men are using you. If he is shining through you, guess what? As, as you're functioning in his place, he'll be supplying you with strength, great strength. So everything you do in life, be conscious that you're doing it under his light. And you see that part of his light, I was telling you yesterday, the men that have walked through that part, they are not normal men. When I mean not normal me, I'm not segregating. I'm not saying you can't walk in it. I'm saying when he takes you through that path, your life becomes something else. That's why you never compare a true child of God with someone in the world. You never say, oh, they are richer than us. You never say that. Because even the principle of the scriptures teaches us where their wealth is going to end eventually. 
see that now. So Ecclesiastes said it clearly, Ecclesiastes 2 verse 26, God gives to the sinner he gives to the one who's good in his sight wisdom, knowledge, and joy. That's what he gives. But the sinner, he is giving travail of sorrow to gather. So the one who has received the ministry to get rich is the sinner. So how come we now say if we are doing, if we are really come on now? And then you know people tell believers God cannot bless, God does not give money. Who told you God doesn't give money? God does not make people, who told you God doesn't make people rich? I mean, you know, you, know, you see, that's why you must watch strife. Because this, these things, you know, sometimes when you see people who say these things, you, you like, I don't think this person is trying to be dishonest. But how did they get here? I'll tell you how they got their strife. Because you listen to someone else preach and you are, you are, angry at his liberty and then you just want to bring judgment you know you know sometimes <laughs> i was talking to someone you know recently i said what's all these things that people do you know someone will sing a song you were not there when the person received the wisdom or the revelation of the song and the person sings the song the way he understands it and the song is blessing people around. Then someone wakes up and say, there is something wrong with the lyrics of that song. Now, I under, you see, listen, listen to me. The person didn't come to you to say, I'm singing this song to you. Understand it. So someone just goes, eh, you know, don't, don't say that because it is not how God is. So you are the one who now knows how God is. Please. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Allow people to be themselves. Don't be judgmental. Don't be judgmental. When people sing what they have received, oh, received. If you think you're more knowledgeable, keep your knowledge to yourself. Keep your knowledge to yourself. It doesn't mean they are sinning. It doesn't mean they are wrong. I say, oh, you know, God is not a way maker. Who said so? I say, God doesn't pamper. Who said so? Where did you get your own revelation from? The fact that you have been facing the hard life doesn't mean someone else is not enjoying God in another dimension. Leave people to be free. Leave people to, to do the ministry that God has called them to. And stop this judgmental thing. Because I can tell you the truth, Jesus did not send you to go say that. He did it. <laughs> no, he did it. Praise God. Allow people be. They themselves will grow. Because they are bold enough to voice out what they have received. You are not sending out anything. You're just being judgmental. Come on now. That's not the light. You are actually causing darkness. Because you're, you're trying to discredit what the person has done. Is, is, is bringing darkness over the person's light. And, and sometimes people have been damaged by such attitude. So the next time God is dealing with them, they are unsure. You see that now? Now that's what you're doing. They become unsure and they are wondering, I hope when I, if I sing this one or if I say this one now, um, they will not say, everybody flows at his own level and allow people to be blessed by every ministry of everybody. The more, you see, and, and this is the truth, there are some people that cannot receive your ministry, no matter how right you are. They can never receive your ministry. Not because they are wrong or you are wrong, but they need several other ministries to grow to the place where they can now receive your ministry. 
So if they don't grow by those other ministers, they can never get to the place where they will receive your ministry. And then you will be on this side and accusing them of being lesser than you. Unknown to you that you also grew to where you are. So let people be. The one who's doing this job is the Holy Spirit himself. What he's giving you may not be what he's giving another person. But in time, we will all come to that place where there will be a straight flow. But if we don't allow people to grow, then we are saying, we are denying that growth that ought to take place. Now, I, I, I'm saying this now, praise God, because I felt in my spirit, this is important to say. So don't get, don't get into all those things. Let people, the next time you hear a song and you want to be judgmental, do yourself a favor. Stop listening to the song. Just, just do yourself that favor. Stop listening to the song. And go grow some more. Because <laughs> you realize that there are things, now even as a, as, as a minister, there are things I've heard for many years or many years ago. I heard it from other preachers and I thought they were right. Now, the more I grow, the more I realize that, oh, they were not all together right then. It doesn't mean that they intended to be wrong or it doesn't mean they intended to deceive. Even the greatest of ministers have made errors in their communication of the gospel. They've made errors. And some of their errors are still being used today. And when you try to tell people, hey, because they feel this is this great minister, who are you? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Well, you see, you don't need greatness to know the truth. You just need Jesus to know the truth. So his truth can be hidden in the least place you will ever think about. So it's not about who said it. It's about what is right. It's about what is true. But many people are still held bound by some wrong teachings because they are too afraid to go before the Lord and receive the truth. So sometimes, even when the Lord is telling you the truth, say, ah, Lord, no, eh? if this thing is true, how come so, so great minister have not known it? How come so, so, you see what's going on in the body of Christ? You know why? We have allowed so much darkness. And guess what? That darkness is affecting the way a lot of believers live. So it appears the church is not advancing in truth. No, advancing in numbers doesn't really mean advancing in truth. We must advance in quality. We must advance as individuals. And the only way that will take place is when we are advancing in the true light. Our time is up for today. We'll continue next week. And I pray. I pray for you. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things and he will guide you into all truth. I pray that your life becomes a manifestation of the work of the Holy Spirit in these two aspects, teaching and guiding you into all truth. I pray you will not dwell in a lie. Yes, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.